We're, We're Batman at 89. Hello, and welcome back once again to Bat Minutes 89, the podcast where we analyze, scrutinize, and crash into uh, Tim Burton's 1989 Batman film, one minute at a time. I am one of the hosts, Niall McGowan. Hello, governor. I am John Parker, also a host. It's what, what, what brought that on, John? <laughs> where, 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 where is this one going? <laughs> well, I was watching Twin Peaks The Return, and Freddy oh, right, right, yeah. <laughs> was, was in it, you know. Don't make me uh, snap you, Gregory. <laughs> uh, today we're joined for minute 98 by a comedian and a part of the comedy duo, Shan and Zoe, uh, Zoe Tomlin. Hello, hello. I was, I was really hoping that you weren't going to say any other details about Twin Peaks The Return because I'm only halfway through. So I was really oh. tense all the way through that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't worry, don't worry. I, I am so anti-spoiler. I... I, I fly into a rage if people spoil anything so i'm, I'm anti-spoiler but i'm also anti-talking before i've been introduced i've got to be i'll be polite politeness first spoilers second <laughs> you, you oh that was that was very respectful of the show you were going to take that hit you were going to take the spoiler because you didn't want to speak <laughs> but, <laughs> but anywho uh we're, today we're talking about minute 98 this wednesday minute 98 begins with a goon descending from the sky and ends one minute later with uh, one of our main characters seemingly mortally wounded. So well, <gasps> let's get oh into it, God. man. Let's get well, man, man and woman. So <laughs> let's let's go. Let's do this. Well, this this goon you mentioned, he's falling, as we saw on Monday's episode, as we heard. You guys didn't see. We can see. You can't watch <laughs> the movie. You're not allowed to watch the movie. Um, he's having a smashing time, isn't he? He. Uh, it's terrifying, though. This stuntman. What the hell? This is crazy, because it's actually a stuntman. It's like, it's not quite Jackie Chan, but Jesus. Oh, I mean, this is all the day's work for these guys, I guess. And it's like, oh, well. I like that he, he falls past, he falls past and hits a sign for a lawyers, mm. flat and flat lawyers. I feel like the lawyers is just ideally placed for all of the insurance claims from people falling out the sky. <laughs> <laughs> They're loving this. This is this is their uh, big year, finally. Yeah, I do feel that lawyer must be a bit dodgy as well. Because, yeah, that, that sign does say, flat and flat lawyers, Chaz Kent, Gotham City. And it's like, Chaz, is this like Clark Kent's dodgy cousin or something? <laughs> and then the fact that, like, Ch Chaz isn't the name of a lawyer. Like no, Ch no. Chaz is like a, a like a Saul Goodman lawyer type. Like that's, that's a, exactly what I was picturing. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't sound like the most like Charles Kent would be a good. Oh, that's a good. He sounds like a reputable guy, but Chaz sounds like, hey, I'm your buddy Chaz. Don't worry, guy, I'll get you out of this one. And, you know, it's really like I, I feel like yeah, Chaz is the Joker's lawyer, and he's been like, you know what? Why don't you do your your killing near my lawyer, and then I can. Uh, claim all of this insurance business and the joke's been like, okay, you got me out of a tight spot before, I'll do it. I, I want to see an alternate universe sequel where the Joker survives. Spoiler, he dies! Um, where the Joker survives and the sequel is him getting his lawyer Chaz in to defend him in court. And it's a courtroom drama. That would be fantastic. I remember that that was the rumour for like the longest time was that, um, I think it might have been one of those things, maybe it was never this way or maybe it was drastically changed after the fact because we're coming up now actually 10 years since Heath Ledger died. It was yeah. Next week or so, it'll be like, oh, 10 whole years. But I remember there was always talk that when The Dark Knight was coming out that it was going to end with the Joker being arrested and then the third movie was going to be his trial and then he would be the one to scar Harvey Dent and then that would make Two-Face the villain of that movie. And That, well, that makes sense, but I also don't want to see Heath Ledger's Joker in a courtroom. <laughs> Uh, it, that, that's one of those ones that might have been like early days. They're like, yeah, this is what we're considering. And then they actually developed the script and it's like, no, we're going to pack it all into this one movie and, and whatnot. <laughs> uh, but I will also say in a little side note, uh, going back to Chaz Kent, because as we covered way early on in this show, Kent was the original name for Harvey Dent. It was Harvey Kent. So it could ah, be yeah. that this Chaz Kent business, that's a little nod to that, potentially. So, well, you've already got Harvey Dent in it, though. 
Yeah, but it just could be like, oh, it's just, you know, we're not allowed to do so, you know, mm. many blatant comic nods, but like, yeah, it'll be for people yeah. who are looking at, and maybe other people will be like, Clark Kent, like, is that what you're going for? Or something like that. So maybe, let's be honest, it it's probably both. It's probably just like stick it in. Yeah. It's good. It works fine. It could be a thing done by set designers, and Tim Burton had no say in that as well. He's just like, ah, <laughs> oh, whatever. It's a, you know, it's a sign, right? That's all I need. <laughs> Almost definitely that. And I've only just noticed, I didn't notice this when I was taking my notes, because you're saying that the lawyer seems dodgy. It's next to a diner and a billiard hall. <laughs> <laughs> would, would you go there for your law advice? I mean, you would if you fell out of the sky onto the doorstep. <laughs> yeah. And that is very much the business model that he is on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's just got a net to catch people. <laughs> yeah. Rolls them through the door. It's like slanted. And just, whoop. It's this whole situation is real. It's like an ambulance chaser's dream. Because he's just like, there's so many injured people. I imagine Chaz Kent is probably looking out his window going like, I'm either going to defend this Joker guy, that's going to be my next big case, or I'm going to be like the people of Gotham City versus the Joker, and I'm going to be the guy, because I'm going out there with like a million cards, just like Chaz Kent, Chaz Kent, Chaz Kent, like throwing them to everybody. <laughs> Although then that answer, ask the question, who, what's flat and flat? What's that about? Oh, well, I have a problem with this, right? This is a pet peeve of mine, and it almost exclusively is a law thing. Well, I hate lawyers anyway. Who who likes lawyers? But um, they always call... If there's two people working there, like, uh, what, what's the name when they get their name on the sign? There's a word for it. They're always going on about the it. Par- in, partners. Partners. If they become a partner, but they have the same surname, they put it on there twice. Flat and flat. Why don't they just call it flats <laughs> or flat? It really winds me up. The only lawyer's name that always really stuck out to me, I think it might be a reference to, like, the Three Stooges, but I think... I specifically remember from an episode of the Gilmore Girls when, like, uh, I think Luke's going through a divorce or something like that. Spoilers for the Gilmore Girls if anyone's not seen it. Um, but it, I haven't, but go yeah, on. Yeah, well, it's not amazing. It's like out of the seven seasons, at one point he gets married and divorced to some woman. But uh, <laughs> she doesn't last long. She's not one of the main characters. <laughs> you don't care. But uh, I remember like, her lawyers are coming in and he's just like, he just doesn't want to have to deal with any of it. And they're like, can you give us the name of your lawyers? And he's just like, yeah, yeah. They're from the offices of Dewey, Cheatham. And how? And it's kind of like, the guy's like, wait, oh, wait a minute, because it's supposed to be, do we cheat them and how? And it's like, oh. it's a real, like, oh, that's cute, you know? <laughs> but I was really upset that they'd missed the opportunity to have a gag here, um, but then I spent a while trying to think of what the gag for the something and something lawyers about somebody falling down was, and I, I couldn't think of anything. So that'll be why it's not a gag. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe they did the same thing. They, they were sat there for weeks, like, we need to put something funny on the sign. <laughs> Well, I was just like, as soon as I saw it, I was like, oh, great. I'm going to write a load of great jokes of something and something lawyers. And then 10 minutes later, I was like, um, maybe I'll just watch the next uh, 59 seconds. <laughs> that's, that's a bit, well, why? Because there's flat and flat lawyers, though. Why are they sharing the sign with Chaz Kent? Because it's like flat and flat lawyers, right? Chaz Kent, Gotham City. It's like, is he a third lawyer? Is he not one of the Chaz? Is he not one of the flats? Is he... It... Is it like a fran- like a, almost like a franchise? Like he works for Flat and Flat, but this is Chaz's hmm. office. That's, that, that's all. Like I don't know yeah, law, yeah. but it, it is a funny thing because it focuses on the sign so much, like we have for the past few minutes. <laughs> so you would assume it's either a gag or what you would do these days. You'd, you'd reference something else in the DC universe. Oh yeah, this would be like Oliver Queen Industries or something like that. That'd have hmm. to throw in something like that. But nope, this is just. Some random lawyer. Unless that was like some lawyer that annoyed Tim Burton. So he's like, right, <laughs> I'm going to smash your sign in my movie. Screw you. Other things they could have put in, though, as we were talking about last minute, Wilhelm Scream could have come in here. This would have been a perfect opportunity to shove that <laughs> yeah. in. But they, yeah, they missed that as well. <laughs> well, next I had a question as well, because you see him fall back first through the sign. And then the very next shot is someone falling front first. I assumed it was the same guy. Is that a different guy? goon? I thought it was the same guy, but yeah. he doesn't spin. I thought this as well, because then in the third shot, he's oriented in a third different direction. Yeah. Um, and I watched it a few times and I was like, is that actually the same outfit? And I think it is supposed to be the same guy. But mm, there, <laughs> there's something. The thing I do like about it is that I feel like seeing someone fall through three frames in slightly different orientations is very comic booky. Yes. And I think that's a that's a fun nod from Tim Burton of how stupid the physics are in this film. <laughs> Oh, yeah. He likes to poke fun at it. Definitely. That's probably what he's going for, actually. Because once again, I kind of thought of Jackie Chan. 
the way he he'll do a stunt multiple times and because he basically breaks a bone each time they they don't have the heart to cut any of the takes so they just put all of the takes in they'll show the same stunt like four or five times in a row <laughs> but they're all different so i thought maybe that was the thing it's like maybe this stunt man very like very much injured himself so it's like put them all in yeah. put them all in and out of respect <laughs> yeah. i just don't remember in the, the the commentary for fight club there's a bit at the end spoilers for fight club there's a bit where ed norton falls down some stairs and uh, what <laughs> you've ruined the film <laughs> yeah oh god damn and the the commentary track like david fincher and brad pitt are doing it together and like uh they're just look watching this guy like, he takes a, like, a massive tumble the stuntman had to do like a big stone stairs a very narrow stone staircase and uh brad pitt's like geez that's really brutal like you had to do like a bunch of takes for that didn't you he's just like yeah we did like uh we did like 15 takes and he's just like oh crap that guy must have been like, oh he wrecked by the end of the day and it's like what take did you use oh the second one <laughs> it's just like oh you <laughs> son of a bitch what does oh. This- <laughs> oh that must be the worst thing ever <laughs> although even even worse the first take <laughs> we've done it 65 times but uh i do love though like when this guy when he lands on the the action news van in a kind of classic simpsons-esque thing he crashes through it and then instantly seems to like explode for some reason <laughs> i guess he's going through wires or something but it's like why is it blowing up it doesn't make any sense I thought that, yeah. What the hell? Like, that only happens in movies, right? Yeah, but that's just like the uh, Hans Mole man, like, getting driven off the road and then, like, lightly tapping into a tree and his car just explodes for no reason. <laughs> it's like, yeah, this guy just fell through some wires. Nope, the whole van's got to go. <laughs> I mean, I assume it's a, it's a movie trope thing. But then again, I haven't fallen on much from a height. <laughs> so <laughs> this could happen if you fall on a truck. I mean, I've fallen out of a tree onto a nail. That's about the only thing I've done. Oh, my God. Oh, man. Yeah, it went into I my side. I feel like after he's fallen that distance, it'll be quite funny if he fell into uh, just an undertaker's hearse directly into a coffin. <laughs> oh. Both the stuntman and the character. <laughs> Even better if the coffin lids open, he lands in it and it shuts. <laughs> yeah. Burn. Call Tim Burton now. <laughs> Special edition this movie. Come on, we need to George Lucas it. <laughs> Chaz Kent's brother, Brad Kent or something. So it's like he's the local undertaker. You just see him out <laughs> in the streets with the measuring tape, just measuring everybody up. And it's like, oh, a lot of business for the old Kent family this weekend. <laughs> he could just look at the camera and do a little shrug. <laughs> <laughs> it's a living. <laughs> well, it's not. Well, what we found out is that the Joker is just really helping local business in every way that he can. Yeah. Maybe that's the real comment. He's given away money because he wants it to be spent in the local shop. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's uh, he's giving away money. He's helping local businesses. He he made all the people with the hot dogs come out. The hot dog stalls have come out, haven't they? Yeah. Now? We've discussed hot dogs many he times. He's taken out uh, cosmetics made by giant corporations. So you'd have to go to your local mm. your, your local sort of uh, you know, homemade sort of soap stores and places, home remedies and whatnot. He was trying to get back to organic produce and things like that. I think he's a good he's a good guy. Yeah, I mean these days he'd be pushing people onto Etsy for their soaps. Maybe <laughs> that's where you get handmade soaps now, isn't the, it? The new hashtag hashtag Joker did nothing wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yes. But anywho, he seems to be just doing a lot of flying about here. This is one of those things of like, yeah, Batman's actually at the minute he's not doing much because he's just sort of he's, he looks great. And it's really cool music. Yeah, that, that's what he's doing. There's he's like a couple cool. cool shots of him just like flying around the air, just checking things out. It's like, ooh, glad that's not me down there. <laughs> the <laughs> only person who's actually done anything so far to deal with this situation is Knox. Yeah, actually. I suppose, well, I suppose Vicky pointed out to people what was happening with the gap. Well, pe- people is well, Knox. Yeah. Well, pointlessly, <laughs> I pointed out to one, one guy. <laughs> yeah, no one else matters. <laughs> yeah. Although to be I on- feel like that Batman's window is quite dirty in this. I I don't know if it was dirty or it was scratched. I couldn't stop looking at it. I'm so glad you I, brought that up. I felt like it's, you know, when you see those vans and somebody's written, oh, you know, this van's as dirty as my wife. <laughs> uh, if, I, if I was the Joker, the first priority for me was going to be to write some kind of rude thing in Batman's dirty window. That is quite a Joker thing to do as well, to be honest. Oh, that's weird, though, because if, if it's dirty or scratched, it's like, is this not the first time the bat wing's been out of the box? Like, why is it dirty? It's like, I thought he, this is the first time he's, he's taken it out. Unless he's been... Well, no, that, see, that's what confused me, because this is why I'm glad you brought it up, Zoe, because I was the same. I, I rewound it to just look at the glass. I was staring at it, or whatever you call it. Is it glass? I don't know, plexiglass, whatever. Because it looked all smudged and dirty, 
And I liked that because it, it looks used. Like, it looks like your car. Your car's a bit dirty. Cars have got, like, smudges on it and filth. And he's flying around. It'll get dirty. But, yeah, isn't it supposed to be new? He's not been Batman for long. So I don't really know what they're going for there. And you know that these days, if they did it, it would be pristine. It probably wouldn't even be there. They'd CGI that over the yeah, top. Yeah, totally, totally. Although uh, it does, uh, what you were saying, Zoe, about like the people riding on dirty cars reminds me of, it was like a thing that was going around. Someone had done, it was like a viral photo. And at, like soon after Dark Knight Rises came out, and someone had found like a really dirty van, and he'd done like this really intricate beautiful picture of bane kind of leaning down to bruce you know from that shot of him talking to bruce wayne in the in the the pit or whatever you want to call it and as the guy written is just like only when you have cleaned your car then you have my permission to drive and it's like oh so much effort gone into that <laughs> like, perfect this is like a, you might have been out there for hours to get that done as well <laughs> it was crazy <laughs> <laughs> anyway <laughs> yes so batman is on his way finally as the gas continues to spread. Um, and again, like considering that one guy in the last minute died almost instantaneously, it's taken a while for this to affect anyone. Like, we've seen one guy fall clutching the money, that one guy on the car. Th- that's about it. Everyone else is there just... is a high, high dispersal of this gas. There is. I, as we discussed in the last minute, I just feel like the gas is just disappearing and for all that he's got this interest in local business, the Joker's really not <laughs> investing his gas locally. It is, ev- is everywhere. <laughs> well, you've you got to expand somewhere, you know. <laughs> it, into the atmosphere, yeah. <laughs> the it's the only, like, only place left. Is there, is there any other potential uses for Smilex as well? Like, well, beyond its killing capabilities, you can also use this as like a, like a powerful explosive or like a... You fact, put it into low income heating or something like that. Like what's what's like he, Oh, I was thinking like add it to your add it to your curry for a nice spicy flavour. <laughs> Just yeah. You know, it's got a lovely green colour. I can see why it was used in the cosmetics. I think that's a ah. <laughs> that's a bold move. But um I don't know. Could you? Uh, how much for concentration of Smilex do you think you need to actually kill someone? Could you use it as a a mild kind of antidepressant? Ooh, that's a good... Oh, oh, that's interesting. Oh, that'd be a great little twist. Actually, they they use Joker's deadly chemical for good at the end. Oh. To cu- to cure mental illness, which it, maybe ironically for the Joker. Oh, that'd be amazing. Why isn't that in the movie? God damn it. <laughs> but, uh, we do see the, the Smilex getting like properly blasted out of the, the balloon here, which is looking a bit sort of worse for wear at the minute. It's, it looks like it's got like big sweat stains or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know how it feels. Jeez. <laughs> Coming from its, uh, its pores there. And it's one of these things, again, the gas is all it's shooting downwards. Whereas like, you imagine if this was actually happening, unless it had such an intense concentration, it'd probably be going upwards. But eh. Science. You know. <laughs> is it, if, if it is like hydrogen and you can fill balloons with it, I mean, it could be for the next generation of Zeppelins. Is it mm. s- slightly safer than how Zeppelins used to be filled? Oh, it could is be. Is it explosive? It doesn't seem to be explosive, does it? I don't think. Mm. Is there ever a time it explodes, Niall? In a, no, spoilers, no. upcoming minutes. I don't think it, <laughs> it ever is explodes. It, the thing is, it is just like it's only, it's only been utilized for one purpose thus far. So we're not exploring all the possibilities of this gas. <laughs> I'll tell you what, uh, we have previously explored, but it's on the screen again. 100% confirmation here, Niall, that this float, or, or balloon or whatever, it's a float, uh, is dolly mixtures. Yeah, oh, yeah, the, the licorice all sorts and whatnot. Yeah. But at least now we've got like an, an English person on to talk about it, because I remember <laughs> when we were talking about the Kiri, she was just like, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> but like... I will say, <laughs> licorice all sorts, dolly mixtures, all that, Zoe. My most loathe of all the sweets. So I was yeah. very disappointed to see them represented in this film in any capacity. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's been troubling me since we first noticed it, I'll be perfectly honest. How do you feel about, about these sweets? Are you a fan? <laughs> I love licorice as a kind of motif of, of something, um, you know, very cutesy, which is also pure evil. Yes. And I think that's the Joker all over. And uh, like you, uh, I... I freaking hate licorice. It's disgusting. Who eats but, it? Um, 
I don't, old, old people, my mum buys this licorice, um, which I can never forgive her for. She always offers it to me like it's a sweet, but it's licorice Ugh. coated in salt. Oh, oh. So I'm literally know. trying to, like, how do we take a terrible thing and make it even worse? as <laughs> so cover it in salt. Safe to say, I don't talk to her after that. <laughs> Anymore. <ever>. Ever. <laughs> I, it's really is the worst thing. Although I will say, from like the most recent pictures I've seen of you, Zoe, is like you have pink and blue hair, or you did. So it's kind of like I, w- I was a bit trepidatious of like, yes, because on the the packet is there is a lot of pink and blue. It's like maybe she's like a huge fan of these sweets, <laughs> and that's that's in, inspired her whole look. I I love the fact. That, I don't know. I think it's a bit like me, is that it's very brightly coloured on the outside, but uh, bitter and horrible on the inside. <laughs> I can sympathize with that. Um, but no, I'm kind of, I'm into, I'm into kind of rainbow colored nihilism. So hey. yeah, the Joker, listen, the more I talk about it, the more I'm identifying with the Joker. So I'm not going to say anything else. <laughs> <laughs> I think as well, these, these sweets are, they're nice aesthetically, aren't they? They look like they're going to be nice. That's how they draw you in. That's why I always end up trying them after years going, they might be nice this time because they look tasty, but they're horrible. <laughs> Maybe that maybe that is a comment, the Joker. Like he he's presenting himself as a friendly guy. You know, he's like, I'm gonna give you all money. And he comes out, he's singing and dancing, he's got Prince playing. How can you be cooler than that? He's got Prince on. And then but then in you know, inside he's he's horrible. I think the Joker is all about I mean, we talked about the baby and the clown float in the last episode as well uh, but the joke is kind of all about presenting as this infantile uh, cutesy thing that draws people in um i think the sweets work really well to do that or oh, i have a bit of a sidebar oh, yeah. um which is that uh this reminded me of something i used to have when i was a child i spent an inordinate amount of time on a game which was a uh, kind of batman animation suite uh, which came bundled with Packard Bell computers in the 90s. I'm on board. Um, I know, but the uh, the sweets made me think of this thing because I spent all of my time on this uh, making animations with the... Um, there was like an airbrush tool that did rainbows and I spent the whole time drowning Batman and Robin <laughs> in rainbows, which I want to say is some kind of like early understanding that they represented toxic masculinity and I was, you know, really wiping it out. But I, I think it was probably more that I was just a small psychopath in my parents' <laughs> attic. <laughs> Why can't you combine the two things? That's perfectly fine. I have, and I will continue to do so. <laughs> <laughs> you've done it very successfully. It's kind of you saying, though, you've only just realized that you're sympathizing with the Joker. It's like, it sounds like you were sympathizing with the Joker when you were a kid by <laughs> trying to... Try- yeah, exa- exactly. But it's just, just this very brightly colored toxic substance is something I've been interested in. I really like that in Tim Burton's works generally. I think he represents, yeah, the horror of childhood and kind of the darkness that hides behind all of these cutesy things that you use to explore the world. I think it's really cool. <laughs> well, what happens then next within the minute, though, is just, it's questionable from multiple angles, is that uh, Vicky's decided she's out of here. And so she's taking Knox's car and so, kind of doing a runner, basically. <laughs> and then Knox and himself, he decide, he notices her going and then decides to ditch the baseball bat and <laughs> jump on his bonnet. And it's like, so one, was, was she just abandoning him? Like, she was like, oh, the hell with this guy, I'm out of here. And then two, it's like, what's he thinking? I'm just like, oh, Christ, I better jump on the top of the car to make sure she doesn't leave me behind. <laughs> <laughs> She's finally seen her chance to get rid of the guy. <laughs> it's interesting because, obviously, yeah, she, she is leaving with his car to a certain death. Yeah. <laughs> for him but he so on one hand it's terrible but on the other hand you could also say it's like uh it, it just shows how he he won't leave her alone it's like it, to the point where he dives on a moving car to be with her i mean that recalls the bit earlier where the gu- the other dude jumps onto the front of the car and he's a villain and i think this does tell us that Knox is yeah he's the he's the nice guy that won't quit <laughs> and he's been lined up visually by Tim Burton as the same as that villain who's harassing her. Yeah. I will say though, uh, it should be noted like in the OG script, the original script, because Knox was much more a much more dynamic character in that, and he he was the one who sussed out that Bruce Wayne was Batman. And then around this time in the in that script, he has like a major thing that he contributes in that they're trying oh, yeah. to you know Batman's looking around, you know, flat doing what he's doing here, just flying about. And they're like, oh, we need him to get rid of the balloons. 
And so what Knox does is that he crashes like a, a, a like a bin or something through a costume shop window. And he finds that in there they have a Batman costume because he's become like, you know, kind of a cultural thing. They're like, oh, people, you can just dress up as Batman yourself now. He takes that bat, the cape and cowl, runs over to one of the floodlights, drapes it over it, and then blasts the light and that onto the balloon to signal the Batman that's where you need to go, thereby creating the bat signal, mm. which is one of those like, well, that's a pretty cool ah. thing to do. Even though within the film, that wouldn't look right because it's just going to be like a crumpled up cape on a thing <laughs> it would just look really stupid hmm. i have two questions i have two questions about that one how does that make yeah the batman symbol there's not specified it within the script that, unfortunately that's strange yeah and also something i because i read the same thing i was very confused because again isn't batman supposed to be like the new kid on the block so why is there a Batman costume already installed? Uh, I, I could have figured that. Or in the draft, is it different, actually? I can't remember. Oh, no, I think it's the same idea. But I imagine it's just like an opportunistic costume designer. It's just like, oh, this Batman thing's supposed to be big. I've heard he looks like this. I'll make a costume and then... Because, again, actually, it was... We already know that the Gotham businesses are very opportunistic. <laughs> oh, so yeah. I don't think it's that much of a reach that they're already merchandising Batman days into his arrival. <laughs> True. Yeah, and Joker that's... managed to brand and merchandise himself overnight. Mm, yeah, totally. Yeah. So, uh, but that is just like a little like, well, at least Knox, the, at least he did something there. Like that's kind of, I guess you could argue that that idea is kind of reused by Chris Nolan in Batman Begins because then the bat signal is created by... Bat- Batman to signal to Gordon to come collect uh, Falcone. Like, he ties him to the-, the floodlight and shines it in the sky. And then that's the inspiration for the bat signal at the end. And it's like, oh, so maybe... Because we know for a fact that Tim Burton... Or not Tim Burton, that Chris Nolan was definitely influenced by... Not just this film, but by the original script. Because there's a lot of things that wind up in The Dark Knight that are just like, that was in the Sam Hamm original draft as well. <laughs> so I'm feeling, uh, I would not be surprised if he had read it at that point and was like, I like this idea. I'm going to I'm gonna swipe this. And uh, Well, I guess it was, begins. I think that was David Goyer wrote that. So I guess you can say he ripped it off or whatever. But <laughs> well, not ripped off. Could be, I, I could say this and that. Could some guy be like, I think you'll find an issue 665 that uh, <laughs> Batman tied Maroney to a floodlight in the first place. And blah, 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 so... Yes, I love the look on Knox's face as he's hanging on to this part. <laughs> it, it's comedy gold. He seems to be particularly petrified by the windscreen wiper. Like, he's very... <laughs> That's exactly what I was going to say as well. As if it's going to start like, moving. Ga- yeah, there's gas out. There's creepy clown balloons. But he's just really scared of the windscreen wiper. <laughs> <laughs> I guess maybe because it's like... oh, Actually, oh, wait, I've only, I've only just caught on to why. Because I'm going through it. I'm scrubbing through the minute. He's hanging on to the windscreen wiper. I didn't realize. Oh. That's what he's holding. I, I didn't make that note either. What a stupid thing to grab. <laughs> <laughs> i got to grab something. So what else is there, really? <laughs> uh, well, I've never hung off a car, but I've watched Death Proof. So I like to feel that I would know how. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I do love the, the noises he's making there as well. It's a real like, whoa, whoa, whoa. That's Three Stooges-esque sort of like, whoa, wacky comedy <laughs> Weird sound effect. <laughs> well, and then, of course, Vicky, she doesn't give a damn about him because she flies around the corner as fast as possible and abruptly breaks, sending him, again in comedic fashion, flying into the trash. Yeah, I understand she's panicked, but couldn't she just, like, slow down and then just let him into the car? <laughs> like, what's... This is just like, oh, my God, it's Knox. I better hurry up and then try to get him off the bottom <laughs> as fast as I can. Well, you could say, again, it's a thematic thing. She, she's putting his... Uh, his views and whatnot in the trash where they belong. <laughs> Sending him out, you know, into the garbage. He does go crashing into a big pile of, of trash. It seems to be like, what, 90% like bedding or something? Because it's like, why is there so many yeah. feathers? What's going on? I was pretty confused about that. There's a lot of fly tipping in my area. I think there are more moldy mattresses on my street than people. <laughs> but I have never seen a bag full of feathers. Yeah. I couldn't wrap my head around that. Not only is it convenient that he lands in feathers, oh, nice and soft, but who's throwing out actual feather pillows? <laughs> like, they're, I mean, they're not even cheap, actual feather pillows. Yeah, the yet. 80s, John. As, as I said before in the show, everything was great in the 80s. So, like, every, you could just throw away your finely knit jumpers and your feather pillows and whatnot. 
<laughs> your duck feather or whatever. I don't know. I don't know. What, what is that? Is it? What's the fancy feather? It is, isn't it? Duck down. I think duck feather is pretty. I think duck down is pretty fancy. Yeah, that, that's what it is. The eighties. Everyone was rich. Everyone had money. There were no problems at all. Everything was. Great. I, I love the idea that the like, uh, you know, your tramps in Gotham have such luxury bedding <laughs> down in the trash. They got they got feather <laughs> bin bags. But I do wonder though, like. Because this is kind of saving Vicky, because she does essentially, she, she's the cause of this, I guess. You, you could blame him for jumping on and whatnot, but then why was she zooming off of him in the first place? Shouldn't she have waited for him to come back and stuff? But uh, it is lucky, like, he could have landed on, like, a bag full of broken bottles and, like, heroin needles or something. And then Vicky would have to deal with the <laughs> guilt of, like, I killed Knox, essentially. Like, it was, that's a thing that I did. <laughs> Well, here's, here's another question I had then. Like, you, you see him laying there. He's got a big cut on his head and stuff, but he's not moving. Obviously, like, we know he's out cold, but are we meant yeah, to think th- he's dead? Because th- he's not moving at all. Are we meant to be like, oh, my God? Well, I think at this point in the original script as well, he does die. Like, he, he does. Gets, uh, he does. Yeah, but so. it, well, I think it's technically around the time of the next minute. Yeah. Oh, well, we can leave it. Leave it the him. Save it. Save but it. yeah, he does die, but in very different it's fashion pretty, to this. It's pretty embarrassing way to die, considering all of the exciting stuff that's going on. <laughs> uh, you can see him listed in the newspaper. You know, oh, and how did this man die? Oh, his mate from work just ran him <laughs> off the road for no reason. <laughs> I'd love it if it wasn't even the car that killed him. He suffocated in the, in the feathers. <laughs> Yeah, he didn't inhale the gas. He just inf- inhaled some duck feathers. <laughs> About her lungs full of duck feathers. <laughs> uh, should bring up too, because I think this is like the second to last time we see Knox. He shows up for a brief second again mm. later, so we might as well get this little note out of the way as well. Because uh, we did go through some people who apparently were up for playing the part. Uh, and I didn't go through all of them because I wanted to save it. And now it's like, well, if not now, when? As Alfred said earlier in this very film. Um, other people up for the part were Rowan Atkinson, which would be weird. Yeah. What? Uh, okay. Uh, I mean, I could kind of picture it, but it'd be a very different character. It wouldn't be like this. I can, I can see that because he's really... I. What I do like about the guy who plays him, I don't know his name, to my shame. I see my earlier note about my geekery. Um, <laughs> he... Uh, the physical um, comedy that he has is really strong. And you see that, like, just his face to do with the windscreen wiper and all of those small little motions. I do, I do think he's really good. But other people, uh, Gabriel Byrne, which is, like, eh, maybe, maybe. Yeah. a bit serious. But uh, Alfred Molina, totally could see that. No problem at all. Uh, Nathan Lane, which is, yeah, 100% could imagine. You know, like, oh, Vicky, we gotta go. Do it. You could totally could buy him. And then, <laughs> and then the two stunners, which I was just like, no way. Patrick Stewart or or <laughs> Ian McKellen who are apparently up for playing that. What? <laughs> and this is one of these things. This is no. an IMDb list. This is like, this maybe this never happened. I don't know. But they do have that down as a thing. <laughs> and it's, um, you imagine the Patrick Stewart or Ian McKellen as this guy. It would be like. Oh, it would be a bit creepy as well. Patrick Stewart doing all the same stuff that that this knocks yeah. does. Like, that'd be another level of... Oh. <laughs> I think if you're getting kind of Shakespearean creep, that is not good. No. Oh. That'd be unsettling. I, I kind of want to see it. <laughs> I just can't imagine, though, just like, like, you know, coming down, him down in the alleyway, it's just like, uh, oh, detective, you know what they say. They say he can't be killed. They say he drinks blood. <laughs> I say you're full of shit, Knox, and all that, all that stuff. <laughs> Or just oh. like, you know, oh, Wayne, oh, that guy's a stiff. He's a rich stiff. But I <laughs> just can't imagine <laughs> this grandeur coming out of Knox, who's a fairly nebbish guy. I mean, come on. Although that's the kind of demeaning, the, the, you know, Patrick Stewart and Ian McKellen are both excellent actors. But it's just like, I don't know if they can pull off not being kind of awesome and grand and stuff. They just have that inherent in themselves. Mm, they could be a villain in Batman. I think oh, they, could, yeah. they could pull that off pretty well. I mean, Patrick Stewart as Mr. Freeze would have been amazing. Oh. Then it, Patrick, are you <laughs> saying Arnold Schwarzenegger is not amazing in that movie? <laughs> you imagine, though, because Arnold's great in that. You imagine Patrick Stewart doing the Arnold lines, though, of him <laughs> coming out and been like, you know what killed the dinosaurs? The Ice Age. and <laughs> a Cool party. And all, it would have been even more ridiculous. Oh, I want to see it. I want to see it. 
Somebody somehow mock up a trailer, fake trailer. Do it. <laughs> there is a little bit of the fact that we have to wait like three more years until we can get, we can dig into that movie. It's like, uh, oh yes, it's, we got good stuff coming up before, but still. <laughs> <you know? laughs> well, with back in this minute, um, the Batwing swoops down to the streets, and Batman flips a switch marked with "roll" at the top and "off" at the bottom, but then a pincer comes out. I didn't understand. Like, what's the switch then? <laughs> I feel like what's happening here is Batman's vehicle boast is just basically my car is a really expensive pair of scissors. <laughs> but the thing about scissors is scissors are binary, right? They're just on or off. But he yeah. has to press it. Was it three buttons to activate this pincer to come out? There's I think he least... needs to rethink his pathways. <laughs> yeah, there's a few actually. Yeah, I didn't even notice. Yeah, three. No, it's a, a switch and three process. buttons, so four. <laughs> I mean, we don't know. That's again, insane. Again, we don't know the, the sci- who actually made this plane for him, whether this was a, a part of Wayne <laughs> Tech or he made it with Alfred or something. And I guess he could be sitting just like, condem- like we're talking about the dirty windows. It could be like, damn it, Alfred. He's too busy <laughs> trying to make my life into a soap opera. He can't even clean the damn bad plane when I need him to. <laughs> Now, I, I looked up some of these controls, because I'm sad oh. that you can see, uh, to see if they were realistic. I'm not, not going to go into all of them. It's insane. Um, but they actually are real flight controls. Oh. Because uh, that one that says trim tab, that's the thing. Because uh, I, I just thought that it was nonsense. It's very complicated, so I'm not going to read the whole damn entry. And I, it was hard to wrap my head around. But it says uh, that the trim tab... Uh, where is it? It changes the set. Sorry, changing the setting of a trim tab adjusts the neutral or resting position of a control surface, such as an elevator or rudder. So there you go. It is actually a flight control. It's not just nonsense, which I thought was nice attention to detail, considering nobody would care except maybe podcaster Jim O'Kane. <laughs> <laughs> that can stay in. He, he likes his planes and things. This is the fact, though, as well, that they've had to send out someone to be like, make sure you get the, the airplane controls correct in the film, which is like in a scene where a guy is coming in to take gaseous balloons away because a killer clown man <laughs> is just like wipe, is showering a city full of you know, 20 million. And his, who was this guy? Like, oh, it was a gangster who fell in some chemicals and now he's this crazy clown guy. And it's like, but, you know, <laughs> but make sure those controls are right. He's like, oh yeah, we have to go check the chemicals to make sure that's realistic. No, but make sure you check those flight controls though. <laughs> that's the thing. Like you could just have no words there and it'd be fine. Yeah, yeah. Like you wouldn't question it, would you? Anywho, um, in terms of action for this uh, for this minute, I think I'm I'm out. As you guys, you have anything else you want to yeah. bring up? No, I mean he just gathers up the balloons on on the pincers there, doesn't he? That, that's about it. I mean, it's a good tactic, but we don't really know what he's going to do with them until the next minute. Oh. I think it's uh, around this point though. We would usually ask the 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 guests about their history with the the movie and stuff. So um, Zoe, do you have any fond memories of this? movie growing up or like how, are you a big fan of it or like what's your what's your experience with this and I, batman in general well i feel like i've kind of uh i preemptively went went in hard with my packard bell cd rom <laughs> of batman and robin um so mostly my my young batman memories are playing this cd rom endlessly in my parents attic uh and uh, not utilizing really any of the batman and robin features in it except as i say to drown <laughs> men um so, but uh no i was i got very into um the christopher nolan batman when i was a teenager um and i used to go over from the isle of arran where i was growing up we used to get up at six in the morning and uh get the bus and then get the boat and then get the train into glasgow which is where we went to the cinema and i would dress up as the joker uh in central glasgow which was not popular uh (laughs) with with people who were like ah you wee goth i'm gonna stab you you wee goth um i'll be like no i'm the joker it's cool and they were like it's really not. Uh, and we used to go... <laughs> it's <is> um, cool. <laughs> we used to go and um, go and watch the films there. So I have fond memories of later uh, Batman, and I was obsessed with Tim Burton when I was a kid. Yes. So I'm very surprised. I definitely saw this when I was young, um, but I only... I rewatched it just before we did this to refresh 
Um, and I was like, oh, Tim Burton, you lovely bloke. Oh, this was classic Burton as well. It was, he was at his peak of his yeah, powers. Because yeah. how do you feel about like these most recent movies? Because obviously they're not so warmly received. I do. I think there's a real lack of warmth in the newer films, which I mean, some of the stuff we're talking about here with kind of the the sweetness of the set and how um, it looks homemade, but not in a crappy way. It's a really lovely style. I feel like all of that texture is lost in the newer films. Does that make sense? I mean, yeah, yeah. Well, in, in multiple ways, because I mean, in, in his modern movies, he would literally just CGI it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just yeah, fill it in later. It's fine. That, that loses more than just the look. Like, it, it, there's a whole feel that goes with it. It's the whole, all of the childhoody horror stuff, which is all about the little details in stuff that appears familiar and homely, which as soon as you're CGing everything, you just lose all of that texture and all the possibility that there's something else going on underneath. Um, which I think the this Batman film has loads and loads of. And are you... Well, maybe you haven't seen this one either. Are you a fan of uh, Batman Returns? I haven't seen Batman Returns, I oh. don't think. Oh, but oh I... it's mm. even better uh, in my <laughs> eyes. I, I think you'll like it because it's... We've, we've said on the show before, it is the most Tim Burton one. It, he was just given free reign on that. It's crazy. It's Batman Returns with the Penguin. Yeah. Yes, I can tell you that the Penguin also featured very heavily in my uh, kind of uh, horrifying uh, animations. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping you were going to say in your costumes that you would go to the cinema in. I want I dress as the Penguin. That would be fantastic. <laughs> I mean, I am I am only five two, so maybe that would have been the better costume choice. <laughs> I guess I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued by this now. Oh no, I was just intrigued. It's like, you've got any photos of this Joker outfit? Because I'm always like intrigued by like. What people, how people put their spin on dressing as the Joker? Like, what do they put into the outfit? So I'm like, oh, have you got any pictures of it? Like, or I don't think so, but I will have a look. I will, I will send you one for your, uh, for my humiliation <laughs> <laughs> in the service of podcasts. Well, we do, if I can uh, find one, we do put up pictures of the the guests and whatnot when the episodes are airing. So by all means, if you want that to be one of you, <laughs> then we're more. <laughs> I, <laughs> I still have very Jokery hair, so. <laughs> Before we go as well, you you haven't really got a, a shot of him much in the minutes. We haven't, we haven't actually has he been in it at all? The Joker? He's no, not, has he? No, not that. No, but we do ask a lot of our guests a very important question. <laughs> now, <laughs> Niall grew up assuming that Jack Nicholson was supposed to be a sexy man, <laughs> and we 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 want to know if people think he is. A sexy man or not because i'm of the opinion that no <laughs> no he's not at all but he's always in portrayed as like a handsome guy or something he's the kind of guy who i can't imagine him ever having been young yes he's always been that age i, I think he came out of the womb with an adult's head <laughs> and a middle-aged man's head at that yeah receding um, hair <laughs> i listen i wouldn't i wouldn't put Jack Nicholson on any of my kind of top 10 lists of men. But of the selection of men on offer to our female protagonists in this film, <gasps> I would definitely go for the Joker. Oh, more than Keaton. Oh, way more than Keaton. Oh, the pout. <laughs> <laughs> I live for the pout. Oh, I live for the grin. <laughs> the Joker no, grin. The, jo huh? the Joker's got more, a lot more interest. You know, he's got an interest in art history. And uh, true, true. Um, he's, as we've talked about, he, he's interested in local business. I think he's his his politics probably similar to mine. He seems quite a radical, <laughs> radical lefty guy. Yeah, I suppose. Um, yeah. So basically what I'm saying is Jack Nicholson, no, but the Joker, yes. Ah, OK, OK. I can understand that more. Is that weird? I, I could understand someone <laughs> fancying the Joker, but not Jack Nichols. <laughs> I mean, let's not investigate too much that I was dressing as the Joker and now I'm like, oh, the Joker's a really hot guy. <laughs> I, mean, I, I, I know people, there was a girl in my hometown and she was, she really, really had the hots for Heath Ledger's Joker. Not Heath Ledger, him as the Joker. She was obsessed with him. And she just thought this is the sexiest person that ever existed ever. And it's like, He's like a greasy. He looks like he's kind of like a greasy homeless guy with like big <laughs> scars on his face and stuff. Like, is that maybe it should have been? Like, I'm thinking all this time, people thought Jack Nicholson was sexy, but I was missing out on the 
derelict looking psychotic with scars <laughs> dynamic that's, that's think, what i should have yeah. been going for i was gonna say i think what it is is it's the same for jack nicholson as it is for that that joker heath's joker it's the it's the uh, the character that he gives off like jack nicholson's mannerisms and his personality and things like he's he's an intriguing person even if he's not traditionally like, oh, he's a handsome chap. You know, he's, there's something about him. He's got a lot of charisma. It's the same with that Joker. I mean, that's probably why she liked him. It's, it's his strange kind of character. I don't think you look at him and go, ooh. <laughs> I don't think you'd want to take Bruce Wayne to a party, but I think you would definitely want to take the Joker to a party. Yeah, Bruce in this movie, as, well, you've just watched it, so you'll probably remember. He's, he's quite dull. But that's the character. Like, he doesn't have a life. He, he lives to do this. That's it. And he sacrifices everything else, including just wanting rid of Vicky. He's like, I haven't got time for this. I've got to be Batman. Whereas Joker, at least, you know, he's, got, he's doing a lot of stuff. He's, he's an artist, as you say. He's doing everything. Yeah. I mean, I, I feel I have nothing else to add. I think that he's a, he's a great guy. And if you put him on Tinder, he's going to do better than Bruce Wayne. <laughs> we'll try that. Well, let's make some fake Tinder profiles now. Let's put them up. <laughs> Research purposes. We'll put that up. We should ask Lux to know that you have to step out now, uh, Zoe. You can't come in for Friday's episode. But uh, w- will you? would you want to return for Batman Returns when we cover that later? Oh, I'd love to. I'd love to. I'll try and track down my uh, CD-ROM and my embarrassing teenage photos. Hey, and don't don't worry, you've got plenty of time because this show is so long. When will we be doing Batman Returns? Later in the year. Yeah, (laughs) be ages. ages. I keep thinking it'll be like, oh, like, uh, like, oh, it'll be like May or something like that. But now as it goes on, I was like, I think this this these episodes might stop. This episode could be airing in May. We don't know what the time zone is (laughs) anymore. So we're quite far ahead of uh, the schedule. Yeah, Yeah. so it'll be sometime Um, mid to late. 2018 anyway so. i will look forward to hearing from you in 2030 <laughs> <laughs> that's when we're doing the last of the four movies we're covering <laughs> and before we go one more time would you like to tell our listeners where they can find you or get in touch with you or check out your your comedy work and whatnot you can check out my great content on Twitter, uh, I'm at Zoe Tomlin, and I've got quite a few gigs coming up. Both me and Shan know I'm in a double act with, and my solo stand up. So go on there, and then uh, you can find me in real life via that because the internet is a terrible place. <laughs> Good guy. Uh, yeah. Do you want to be promoting it then? Do you want people to find it? <laughs> that's, that's the that's the curse of promoting your work. It's like you have to, but you don't really want to. <laughs> Uh, I don't. I don't want to see anyone ever, but I also really do want people to come to my comedy. So I'm. I'm stuck. Really. <laughs> <laughs> I feel your pain. It's like I'm a podcaster, but I have intense problems with anxiety. <laughs> it's like, I don't really want to have guests on, but I love having guests on at the same time. It's, it's fantastic. So so check Zoe out online, and make sure to check us out. Join the Bat Minute eighty nine listener society, or tweet us at Bat Minute eighty nine. And make sure to rate, review, subscribe on iTunes because that's very, very helpful to us. And join us again because we will be back on Friday with a new minute and a new guest. See you then. Next time, the death of a titan as the Dark Knight drags some destructive dirigibles away like a demonic kite. Will the Dean of Demonic Drollery deliver death to his most dependable dupe? Find out Friday. Same bat pod, different bat minute.